Good evening, viewers, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of your weekly program, Crime Watch. This program is aimed at creating an interactive platform between the police and members of the public in combating crime. Remember, crime does not pay. I'm your host, Cynthia Jikaramba. Thank you for joining us. As the nation continues under level two of the COVID-19 lockdown rules, the Commissioner General of Police, Comrade Tandabantu Godwin Matanga, emphasized the roles of the police during this lockdown period during a presentation at the Zimbabwe Defense University recently. Police readiness is being challenged by the coronavirus pandemic. And the coronavirus continues to infect more people in our country. The Zimbabwe Public Police has been called into action in helping to control the spread of the disease. As part of the frontline staff in the fight against COVID-19, the Zimbabwe Public Police has deployed manpower in quarantine centers, mounting roadblocks throughout the country, and the sealing of international borders as part of measures aimed at preventing the spread of the coronavirus. Police officers are among the frontline workers in enforcing the lockdown rules. In performing their duties, they are often joined by the police constabulary, Polycon members who voluntarily offer their services so as to support the regular police officers. ZRP Rimuka in Kadoma recently honored police constabulary members at their station with grocery hampers in recognition of their hard work, which has resulted in numerous arrests at an event held at the Rimuka police station recently. The guest of honor, Mr. Lengton Mabanga, held the services being offered by the members of the Polycon. Many a time, Van in the front line the service. Not knowing service. Service takes citizenship. To feel a citizen, a responsibility as a citizen. Brothers and sisters of Polycon, continue doing the good work. Continue, continue giving a service. Continue moving forward. Ramai mutita shujakana. Fully knowing that along the way, you will find partners who are willing to walk side by side with you. And you've got those partners in all the platforms. In an interview, the officer in charge, Rimuka, Chief Inspector Michael Kugara, was full of praise for the constabulary members and said they would do a lot more to motivate them. I want to thank um, the um, support that we get from members of the Polycon who help us in uh, patrols uh, as well as um, other deployments. They come for day patrols, they come for night patrols, and they are sent on different errands. Uh, the majority of our arrests are as a result of their intelligence. We always continue to have uh, other initiatives to motivate them. We also spoke to some of the recipients who appreciated the honor bestowed on them by the station. <laughs> The Zimbabwe Republic Police has embarked on Operation Accept Zimbabwe Currency as legal tender. The Zimbabwe Republic Police reiterates that traders and business entities who continue to refuse to accept Zimbabwe currency bond notes and coins as legal tender in business transaction risk being arrested and taken to court 
for the law to take its course. Since the onset of the Operation Accept Zimbabwe Currency as Legal Tender on 26 June 2020, a total of 102 suspects have been arrested, with 28 appearing in court in Harare. Members of the public are urged to continue reporting to the nearest police station, traders and businesses who contravene Section 3, Subsection 2, as read with Section 4 of Statutory Instrument 175 of 2008, in terms of Section 48 of Bank Use Promotion and Suppression of Money Laundering Act, Chapter 24.24, Number 2 of 2004. We now look at arrests made by the police across the country. Police in Marondera have arrested three suspects for theft of farming equipment in surrounding farms. Brian Kajau, 831, of Sekechi Tungwiza, Agripa Butau, age 29, and Watson Washate, age 26, both of Dorset Farm in Marondera, were arrested with the aid of police dogs leading to the recovery of farming equipment. We received a report of theft of farming equipment at Magwengwe Farm Marondera. We swiftly reacted and proceeded to the scene. Upon arrival at the scene, I cast my patrol dog. The dog tracked due west for a distance of about three kilometers to a nearby bush. The dog indicated the place where the suspects bent and cut the aluminium pipes into small contrabands. The dog further tracked westwards for about eight kilometers to another farm where we spotted two suspects. We challenged the two suspects from a distance to stop, but they didn't comply. We released our patrol dogs and we managed to apprehend the two suspects. We searched their bags and recovered some pieces of aluminium. We further interviewed the two suspects. We managed to apprehend the third suspect. Crime Watch spoke to one of the complainants, Mr. Richard Serga, who urged other farmers to report to the police at the earliest time possible. As a citizen of Zimbabwe, I would like to thank the ZRP for all the assistance they gave me in this case. Uh, they were more than helpful, they were more than willing, even at short notice, they came out, they did their duties, and they performed so very well. I'd like to appeal to my fellow farmers that should they incur such incidents of theft, which are ongoing in this day and age, that they seek the assistance of the ZRP to assist them in recovering their properties and apprehend criminals. On that note, we take a short break. Join us in the second segment. We are now in the second segment of Crime Watch and we continue looking at arrests made by police around the country. An ex-convict, Timothy Chikwenere, who was released from prison on amnesty in January 2020, will find himself back in prison after he was nabbed for theft from car cases. We have been experiencing cases of theft in Timiria Park in, in Rua. As CID Islands, we then set up a team to carry out investigation into these cases. The team managed to get information from their sources leading to the arrest of two accused persons, namely Timothy Chikwenere and Rodson Vindudu. Upon being questioned, they further led the detectives to the recovery of seven car batteries. The owners of the Batteries managed to identify the batteries. Accused persons were taken to court and remanded in custody. To the members of the public, we would want to urge them that they must put personal identification marks on their batteries such that upon recovery, 
they will be able to identify them. Kramer also spoke to one of the complainants who had come to identify his property. I would like to thank uh, CID Highlands on uh, investigations of the battery which I lost. I'd like to thank them for the work they did on the recovering of the batteries. They were very helpful. I would like to urge everyone that if they lose their property, they should uh, report to the police so that uh, they will definitely get some help. In a related matter, members of the Zetarabi Bulawayo traffic who were on patrol in the central business district arrested a wanted criminal who together with his accomplices tried to steal from parked motor vehicles. They recovered an assortment of car braking tools which include remote control jammers, spark plugs and other tools. We spotted a, an unregistered a silver Honda Fit along 13th Avenue. We drove towards the Honda Fit. Upon seeing us, the occupants of the Honda Fit drove off. When the Honda Fit arrived at the intersection of Jason Moyo and 14th Avenue, the driver of the Honda Fit disobeyed the stop sign and he hit uh, two vehicles that were traveling along 14th Avenue. After the accident, uh, the occupants of the Honda Fit disembarked and they ran in different directions. We chased the driver and managed to apprehend the driver. We then searched the suspect's vehicle and recovered various implements which are used by theft from car suspects to break into people's motor vehicles. This accused person was actually a wanted person for more than 18 theft from car offences. The case has since been referred to CID theft from car department for further investigations. We further interviewed the accused person. Uh, the accused person was on police wanted list in Bulawayo TFC. Uh, we also arrested him possessing of articles of, for criminal use. And uh, he had also one case of Zedarapi Donington and five other fraud cases, uh, Zedarapi Chavalala, whereby uh, laptops, chargers, uh, and other electrical gadgets were stolen in the vehicle. We've got two wanted, wanted persons on our list, uh, namely Winter Chisale, aged 47, and he resides in Ntumba in Blawayo. Uh, the other one is Soms in Lofu. Uh, he lives in Pumula North, aged 33, also in Blawayo. Anyone with information to conduct the nearest police station. May I also hasten to, 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 to give tips to the members of the public. Do not leave any valuables like cash, laptops and bags in the vehicles. After locking in the vehicle with the remote control, physically check if the doors are locked. Members of the public also install alarm systems in the vehicles. Alarm systems are very helpful. As the war on drug trafficking intensifies, Criminal Investigations Department Drugs and Narcotics have seized contraband of 200 boxes of brown clear which had been smuggled into the country from South Africa. They arrested three accused persons, Enoch Chabala, age 34, Snikiwe Liwayo, age 40, and Patson Gambiza, age 29. As CID Drugs and Narcotics, we are concerned with the increase in the number of youth who are involved in drug abuse. Recently, we busted a syndicate that was smuggling brown clear cough syrup from South Africa into Zimbabwe using a haulage truck. We seized this contraband valued at 1.2 million Zim dollars. The two accused persons appeared in court and they were sentenced to 24 months imprisonment each. Codeine phosphate is the active ingredient that the abusers are after in the brown clear cough syrup. I would like to bring this fact to the public that the abuse of brown clear is far-reaching health hazards ranging from infertility, liver, and kidney diseases, not to mention drug-induced psychosis, which is common. Parents and guidance should be vigilant and keep checking on their children for them not to indulge in drug abuse. As responsible citizens, let's join hands in the fight against drug and substance abuse. I would like to warn drug peddlers that we are on the ground and we are coming after you. Following the finalization of drug-related cases during this lockdown,
CID Drugs and Narcotics were granted the order to destroy exhibits. We witnessed this destruction at their offices in Harare. After the finalization of cases at the court, we destroyed the exhibits in a transparent manner and in accordance with the laid down procedures uh, in the statutes. As you can see, our members are opening bottles of unregistered uh, cough syrups. We are going to use uh, the sewer or drainage uh, disposal system. Uh, we will later spill this cough syrup in, in the drainage system so that they are completely destroyed. The methods which we use to destroy exhibits depends on the volume and the size of the exhibit that we intend to destroy. On that note, we take a short break. Join us in the third and final segment for more. We are now in the third and final segment of Crime Watch. Thank you for staying with us. ZRP Country Park has arrested two people for unlawful entry and theft cases that have been occurring during this lockdown period. We received a tip off to the effect that there are two accused persons who were committing a lot of crimes in the Country Park area. Then we made a follow up and we managed to arrest the two accused persons, Edwin Moyo and Emmanuel Duwe. We managed to, to recover a lot of property, which include gas tanks, solar panels, and several other properties. Then we took the accused to court, and they are all remanded in custody. We are urging members of business community to enhance their security and to make sure they are locking their business premises and we are urging members of the public to bring information which may assist to bring culprits to book. We spoke to one of the complainants whose property was recovered. <laughs> The Public Health COVID-19 Prevention, Containment and Treatment National Lockdown, Amendment Order No. 11 of 2020, has deferred the expiry of certain documents and the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe unpacked these deferments and other related matters. Since the announcement of the lockdown by His Excellency the President of Zimbabwe, the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe offices are currently closed. Members of the public who need to make inquiries can call our offices using our landline numbers. We are having our receptionist in attendance from 8 a.m. to 1500 hours. We are receiving inquiries from members of the public who are trying to find out what happens to them in the event that their defensive driving certificate has expired. In terms of statutory instrument 144 of 2020, if your defensive driving certificate expired after the 30th of March 2020 and may even expire after this broadcast, you, it remains valid for a period of 180 days or until the end of the lockdown, whichever comes first. But I would like to warn members of the public who had their defensive driver certificate uh, having expired well before the lockdown that they do not take advantage of that clause. They have to undergo a defensive driving test when we have opened. Holders of learner's license that expired on the 30th of March 2020 onwards, that is at the commencement of the lockdown, they are deemed to be valid for a period of 108 days again. Traffic Safety Council is the ones who regulate and control driving schools. would like to inform you that currently all driving schools have closed. Even the vehicle inspection department's testing centers have closed, which means you cannot 
go for lessons at a driving school during this lockdown, you cannot as well go to the VID for a test. Hence, the extension that has been granted by the statutory instrument. We are also receiving reports that there are some unscrupulous members of the public who are issuing certificates of competence. There is no certificate of competence that was issued during the lockdown and anybody who is claiming to issue that is committing an offence. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe and driving schools fall under the category of teaching and learning institutions. They, therefore, they haven't opened to the public as yet. Another frequently asked question by members of the public is the price of defensive driving courses. The defensive driving course is issued by the Traffic Safety Council and some registered agencies. The price is governed by a statutory instrument, and the statutory instrument that is currently in force is 221A of 2019, which stipulates that the price of a defensive driving course is 190 Zimbabwean dollars. Should there be an increase in the price, it will be announced in the form of a statutory instrument. In terms of charges for the products and services of the Traffic Safety Council, members of the public are free to contact our Traffic Safety Council head office or any of our regional offices. The following people are being sought by the police for various crimes. Wanted by ZRP Bulawayo Anti-Corruption Unit is Jeffat Chaganda, National Registration Number 6374838-2T71, whose last known address is 910 Matendele in Palm Tree. Jeffat is wanted in connection with a case of theft of gold as well as defeating the course of justice. Mutare Rural Police are also looking for Jordan Mulisa Siziba, age 27, whose last known address is 442 Area 13, Angamvura, Mutare. Jordan is wanted in connection with a case of attempted murder and is believed to be hiding in Bait Bridge and surrounding areas. Anyone with information that may help in the location of any of these people should contact any nearest police establishment. You can also get in touch with us on the numbers and details appearing on your screens. Our National Complaints Desk number is 0242-703-631. You can visit our website on www.zrp.gov. ZW. You can also link with us on email feedback at zrp.gov.zw. Our Twitter handle is at Police Zimbabwe. You can also like our Facebook page Zimbabwe Republic Police. Be reminded that all Crime Watch episodes are accessible on YouTube channel Zimbabwe Republic Police. As we come to the end of this week's program, we urge you to continue abiding by the COVID-19 precautionary measures through maintaining social distancing, repeated washing of hands with soap and running water, or alternatively making use of hand sanitizers. We also encourage people to travel only when it is necessary and to religiously wear masks when going out of our homes. This brings us to the end of this week's episode of Crime Watch from me, Cynthia Shikaramba, and the crew behind the scenes. Happy viewing.